Hey everyone, Synthetic Future here. Welcome to part three of this little uh, touch designer thing we're doing. In the last video, we ended up with basically this little contraption where we have two buttons and a slider to do some controls. Uh, a VST bypass, a microphone mute, and a volume control. And today we're going to expand on that by adding some control to the VST. Now I want to um, make sure that you understand that this is a very basic tutorial. So we're going to do this in a very basic way. There are more elegant ways and we will work up to that point. But I just want to make sure that all the concepts are clear. So we're all on the same page. Uh, you might notice that if you followed the previous uh, video, this looks a little bit different. And that's because I have added a little looper section so we can actually get a little bit of a loop going. I've added, added a little, little looper, looper section, section so we can so actually, actually get a little, get a little bit, bit of, of a loop going. Loop going. I've added, added. And that's so I don't have to talk over myself, which is very annoying and really speech jams the hell out of you. Uh, this looper is something I will cover later on. It's, it's a fun little project to build and uh, it's pretty functional. But first let's talk about audio VSTs and doing some MIDI control on them. Um, first thing we want to do is determine which parameters we want to control and how we want to control them. So we are going to open our VST. And in this case, I am using Unfiltered Audio Sandman Pro. This is a delay plugin and I think it would be fun to uh, have some control over the delay time, the sample rate here, delay time here, and the feedback. So those are the three parameters we want to use. And I'm thinking of binding them to this first knob, the second knob, and the second slider. So let's start there. First thing we need to do is turn on the learn parameters in the audio VST, like that. Now you wiggle this little knob here, you wiggle this little knob here, and you wiggle this little knob, and you disable learn parameters. What this has done is it has learned these three parameters. So if you go to plugin, you can now see these three parameters here. If you change any of the values, you will see the slider move along. That's our first step. Second step is that we need to make sure that these controls on the controller are bound in a way so we can easily identify them. So for this, we are going to go to the dialog, to the MIDI device mapper. We will open this window. You go to devices and you go to use device. Now, even though these are knobs, you will still identify them as sliders. So we are going to add a channel. We are going to move the slider or the knob in this case. <laughs> and this is B010 dash dash. Add another channel for the next slider and we are going to clear the log. Move the button. So this is B011 dash dash. And we add another channel and it will be this slider which is B0 01 dash dash. Now that we have these three controls mapped, we can close this dialog. We can go here. It already shows up. Sometimes you need to reset it by just clicking the bypass and clicking bypass again. So now if you move this, you will see slider two, slider three, and slider four. Now, just to keep everything somewhat organized and easy to read or easy to understand, we are going to expand this matrix of selects. So we are going to make a new select. Make sure you're in the jobs. Select. Feed the wire into it. And in channel names, we just want to select the second slider. So that's S2. And now we want to bind this to the parameter uh, let's do delay time. Now, you might be tempted to just drag this value in there, uh, but that will cause some issues because you actually need two-way control. You want the VST to be able to control this value as well. Because otherwise, if you mess around in the VST window, it will break this connection. And for this, we are going to use a bind, which can be found, tap, in the chops and just search for bind. We connect this up to our select four. Now we can click the plus thingy here 
select our RDF VST, drag this to the delay time, chop bind. So now if we move this, you will see the value changes. And if we open the VST, you will see the VST changes. But you can also grab the VST interface and you can see that the value in the bind changes as well. So if I put it here and then I move the button. So this is two-way control. This way, if you change something in the VST, it will still work. So let's quickly test this out with another little loop. Loop. loop quickly, quickly test, test this out with, with a another little loop. loop quickly with test this out with a another little loop. loop quickly loop. test this out with a another little loop loop quickly, quickly test so that works so we can now expand on this by adding some more controls so let's just take these two and copy them paste them now we need to select the next slider so we change the channel name to s Free. So now this will change the parameter. And we are going to go to the Audio VSD plugin, and this will be our control for the sample rate. So we plus the sample rate and we drag and drop. Chop bind. And now you see very little happening. So what is going on here? There is a small thing that's called scaling because this knob actually goes from 100 to zero. So we need to rebind this, or I'm sorry, from one to 100. So we need to rebind this knob. So what we do is we right click the cable between the select and the bind, insert an operator, and we insert a math operator. In the math operator, there's a range column. So the range going in this knob is zero to one. The range going out is one to one hundred. Now, when we move this button, or this knob, you can see it moves from one to 100. So once again, let's do a little loop recording to check if this is working. Let's do a little loop recording to check if this is working. Let's let's do a little loop recording to check if this is working. Let's do a little loop recording. Group recording to check if this is working. And there we go. If this is working, let's do a little loop recording to check if this. So that's two controls down. Let's add the third control, which will be the feedback. And the feedback goes from zero to 100. So we want to have a math in between as well. So we are going to copy this entire row, paste it. And we will clean this up later on. But for now, this is the most obvious way to do this. Uh, change the channel name to S4, which is the fourth control here. Change the math because this needs to go from 0 to 100, because this button goes from 0 to 100. Go to the binds, the white plus icon, audio VST, drag into the feedback, shop binds. And now when we move the slider, you can see the feedback going up. And when you move the feedback in the VST, you can see the slider moving. So that's very nice. So let's once again record a little loop and see if this works. Let's once again record a little loop and let's see if this works. Let's once again record a little loop and let's once again this works. Let's once again record a little loop and let's once again this works. Let's once again record a little loop and let's once again this works. Let's see if 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 this works. Let's see
this works, let's once again record a little loop. And there we go. So now we have control over these three parameters using three hardware controls. And just to reiterate, you can use this in anything. So if you want to annoy your colleagues with very annoying delay loops like that, that's totally possible. Uh, but you can also use it in Discord or anything to do a little announcement. Do a little announcement. Announcement. Do a little 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 announcement. And stuff like that. So if you found this video useful, please leave a like. You can also subscribe and you can check me out on Instagram if you want to see uh, more regular updates. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below in the comments. And uh, in the next video, I will show you a little bit about how to clean this up because this is starting to get a pretty big <laughs> matrix. And we'll maybe, maybe get into the looperator a little bit to talk about how I built that and how it functions. Uh, for now, that's it, and I'm going to wish you a great day. First try! First... First... First try! First try! First try! First try!